Okay, I've loaded a timeline trace I've saved from an earlier session. Wait, wait, you can save timeline traces? Oh yeah, it's a pretty awesome feature. You can just right-click on the timeline and save any trace. Similarly, you can load a trace from a previous session in the same way. This is a really useful feature whenever you're debugging a site and want to keep it for further analysis or if you need to share it with someone. Hmm, wow, all right, I've been taking screenshots. Really wish I had known about this earlier. Yeah, traces are definitely better than screenshots. I've put a link to the trace we're looking at here in the instructor notes. Why don't you download it and open it on your machine to follow along? I'll wait a few seconds. OK, let's look for some CSS events in this trace. First, you can see the CSS request going out. Note that it happens after the first chunk of HTML uh, is received. This is where the parser finds the link tag and initiates the CSS request. Then we wait to get the CSS bytes, and finally, a bit later, we see the recalculate style event, which is where we convert the CSS response into the CSS object model. In this particular case, the CSS is tiny, so it only takes a few milliseconds to do the conversion. But for larger style sheets, this could definitely take much longer. Hmm. OK. So before I rewrite all of my CSS rules, I should probably record the timeline and check out how long this step is taking, right? That's right. Measure first, then optimize as needed. 